Hello and welcome to this Hyperledger Sweden meetup. My name is Roland again, and I'm happy to be your host for today. In today's session, that's me. In today's session, uh, we will talk about channels. And uh, to start, I will give you a short overview what we will do today. So first of all, I will give you an overview about the example. So what we are going to do so that we have a big picture. What is the goal of this session today? And then because of the fact that we are going to use the channels, the application channels and also the system channel. So we have to look a little bit into the uh, config TX YAML file. So that's the main configuration file for the channels. And uh, then we talk a little bit about the difference between system and application channel. And uh, I will give you as well an overview about the needed tools to use this. And then after this theoretical part, we are going to do it hands on. So I will show you how we can use the test network. Um, we, we will modify a little bit the test network script so that we only create the uh, identities and the crypto material for the users and the peers. And then we, so we are able to install the system channel and also the application channel by our own. And uh, we will do it step by step so that we can leave a little bit uh, away from the installation script from the network, uh, from, the, from this network script. And uh, in this example, we are going to install step by step the system channel and two application channels. One, the default channel, so the my channel. And, uh, and the second one, which is dedicated only to organization one. And uh, here you find the agenda, then also the support material. I have uh, put these links also in the chat. So you find the slides, the link to the slides in the chat and also to the GitHub repo where all the examples uh, are listed. And um, maybe some of you know that since yesterday, there is a new version of Fabric, the Fabric 2.3. And this version has two new big features. And one of them is the, is, is the uh, capacity that um, we don't have to start with the system channel. So we can start with application channel. And, uh, but I think um, my examples and uh, all these examples here are based on the 2.2 version. This is also the long time support version and uh, also uh, the version which is uh, for the moment now needed to pass the Fabric Administrator certification. So uh, for now, I think it's 1.46 and uh, in, the next, on, in the next year, I think in January or so, uh, there will be the, the certification also for the 2.2 version available. And uh, that's important to know that the 2.2 version is the long time support version. And, uh, in, and for the moment, 2.3 is maybe a, a new version. So um, yeah, we will see what this means uh, without the system channel. Uh, to use the system channel in, in the first step. But today, that's not all what you are seeing today. So that's the, the version which is used uh, for the long-term support version. Okay, so a short overview of what we are doing today. So as you know, this is the traditional uh, example.com network consortium. And uh, we have two peers here and one orderer. And then we have uh, the my, my channel, an application channel, and we have a system channel. And uh, in this application or in this example, the my channel is uh, so organized that uh, peer one or the peer zero from organization one and peer zero from organization two have access to this channel. And then we will try to make a new channel the organization one channel. And this channel has only access 
is only accessible from organization one. So, and uh, in both channels, we are going to install some chain code. In the first, we are going to use the basic chain code, and in the second, we are going to use the AB store chain code. And that's the aim of the example, what we are going to do. And you see here also, Sean, you, you see here different names. So I named this ledger here system channel. So because it starts with this, and then we have an application channel and uh, which is called my channel. And then we have an ap application channel, which is called org one channel. And um, yeah, and on this, in this channel, we install a chain code, the basic uh, and uh, the app store chain code, which you should be familiar from the last sessions. So, and um, one of the important things to, to, to use the channels is the understanding of this config TX YAML file. And when you see here this, uh, this, uh, this way, you can see here that we need this config TX YAML file, and then we use a tool that is config TX again, which creates the system channel block, and that is called the Genesis block. So, and in this version, two point in one point four and one point two version, uh, we need as a first step this system channel block, and um, from this channel on, we will create the channel transactions for the so-called application channels, and. To understand a little bit what is for this process needed in this config.tx YAML file. So we are going to look in this file a little bit and the most important part for us are the channel profiles. So with these channel profiles, we can create different channel configurations and then we can use this config.tx scan file to create these uh, uh, channel transactions. Yeah. And yeah, so, and the first step, what we need is the system channel. So since 2.2, this must be the first channel that is created in the fabric network. And um, that is so-called the Genesis block. And uh, there could only be one system channel. So, and that's, that's important when you talk about the channels, then you have to decide between two different kinds of channels. You have to decide between the system channel and then you have the so-called application channels. And you can have as many as application channels uh, if you want, but you can only have one system channel. And then this, the system channel is important because uh, this is in the system channels, there are also the consortium members included and uh, you cannot uh, add a new organization when this when you when when you doesn't change the system channel, so that's an important part that you know what belongs to the system channel and what is part of the application channel. And uh, the system channel defines the set of the ordering nodes that form the ordering service. So in the system channels, we have defined the ordering nodes. Um, and one important point is that that here in the system channel is also defined who are the administrators from the ordering service. So that's important to know, only these administrators which are uh, defined in the system channel can administrate the ordering service. So that's a an, uh, an, an task from the system channel. And it defines the organization uh, that are members of the blockchain consortium. So that's, that's um, maybe a little bit a misunderstanding when we do the examples in the, in the, in the fabric examples and also from the winter docs uh, that we forget to use the, the new member to the system channel. And uh, we have to, uh, when we add the new organization, we have to modify the system channel and uh, add the new member there. And then we can add the new organization also to the existing application channels. So that's an important part that all organization members are defined in the system channel. 
And the consortium is a set of peer organization that belong to the system chair, but are not administrators of the ordering service. So that's also in part important. Um, that you know that all peer organizations must also be uh, part of the system channel. Yeah, and then the Genesis block of the system channel is required to deploy, deploy a new ordering service. Uh, that's also important part that you do the uh, creation of the Genesis block of the system channel with the system channel uh, as a first step. And then in the second step, we can start the network because uh, when you look at the Docker Compose file, you will find the, the, the binding in the Docker Compose file by the ordering settings to this uh, Genesis file. And uh, without this Genesis file, this will not um, uh, work. So, and important, uh, there is a Genesis block. There is only one Genesis block for this ledger. So we have only one Genesis block for uh, the system channel. And uh, based on this, uh, but this belongs also to 2.2 now. So that could be a little bit different now in the 2.3 version. And uh, that's an important part. So we need the Genesis block in the first step. And uh, after the creation of the Genesis block, then we can uh, start the network. And when we look later into the Docker Compose file, we will see uh, the point where this Genesis file is uh, linked to the uh, position on the file system. And then you have the application channels. So, and the application channels, so, uh, that is the that is where the transactions are uh, come together and where different members of the consortium can talk to to each other and uh, this should be a private and confidential uh, in a private and confidential way and uh, so a channel this is this is, i think a unique part of the fabric uh, in the blockchain world so uh, with these channels only organizations with 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 uh, part of this channel can um, communicate and uh, can read the, 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 the um, can read the, or can use the chain code, can read, can read uh, some information from the chain code and uh, send transactions to the chain code. And with, with this, with this uh, element, you can control who has access uh, to the, uh, to the data into the into the blockchain. So you can have 10 members, uh, but not all 10 members must have access or can have access to a channel. So you can play with this and you can say, okay, uh, in the first channel, uh, only these two members have access and can interact with each other. And uh, in the channel B, uh, that's a uh, general channel, all members can communicate with each other. So, and that depends on the business need and uh, in this way you can uh, make this. So important is that this is a private area like a private chat and only the people uh, or the members which have access rights in this channel have the possibility to create transactions or read transactions. And also important, you can have as many as possible uh, or as many as needed application channels. So, and, um, and that's also an important part. But the really important part is that you, in your mind, understand that there are two different kinds of channel types. One is the system channel and one is the application channel. And the chain code will be installed uh, always in the application channels here. And um, I have here some more information. So um, it's, it's true that the, that the channel is definite by the member organization of the consortium and also of the anchor peers uh, for this, for this uh, members. And sometimes you find the term, it's a shared, shared ledger and, uh, and, you, and you have only one channel per ledger. And uh, you have a chain code, but you, you have seen, you can have uh, uh, more than one chain code on one channel. So we can install uh, different uh, chain codes on one channel 
and uh, also the ordering nodes are defined uh, for this channel in this application channel. Yeah, so that's, I think that's clear. So each transaction on the channel is executed on the channel, uh, as I have mentioned, and uh, every uh, participant on this channel must be authenticated and authorized to transact on that channel. So, and that's where the permission, uh, because Fabric is a permissioned network and uh, only people who are authenticated and authorized can have transactions on this channel. Yes, and also it's clear that each peer that joins a channel has its own identity given by the membership service provider. So as we have seen sometimes, uh, the, membership, the term membership service provider is an important one. And um, this is a an, uh, an topic we will cover in the next um, sessions. And uh, yeah, the membership service provider uh, includes all, includes the crypto material for one organization. And uh, with this membership service provider data, uh, the, the identity is uh, provided to the ledger. And through this identity, the, he, the, channel, can, the channel can authenticate the peer against uh, the system. And there is a Genesis block for the channel. So when we talk about the Genesis block, um, so we have to be carefully so that we know that there is a Genesis block for a channel or a starting block for the channel. And we have also a system Genesis block, which is uh, responsible for the start of the whole network. And um, I have tried to do it in, a, in, a, in, a, in this diagram. And you can see here, we, we can have two, two lines here. So we have the ordering node, so the ordering system here, and we have here the peer system. And when we say the, the ordering node, from the ordering node, sort of from the order of service, so we have to create first this genesis, uh, the system channel. And uh, with the system channel, this is also the genesis block created. And uh, this is the, the, the foundation, the basic. And from this Genesis block, we can create this uh, uh, update transactions uh, for, it's called a channel transaction. And uh, this channel transaction uh, we need for every channel. So for the my channel, we need a my channel TX file. So when you do this, you see that there is a, a file, uh, some TX file um, created. And um, with this TX file, uh, we can create this channel genesis block, the block zero. And uh, that belongs to the application channel. And uh, yeah, and this started from the peer node. And that is also for uh, a second channel when we have um, the, this uh, for the single organ for the single organization uh, one soul and uh, um, we also need a genesis block and for this we also need here a new transaction a new transaction uh, with for the single organization one so that's wrong here that's a mistake here should be uh, not my channel um, this should be uh, organization one channel, I think. And uh, so, and here you can see that we have the system channel belongs to the ordering service and the application channels belongs to the peers. And uh, on, the, on this ledger, we are on, also on the peers channels, we are going to install the chain code and uh, here all the transactions are stored to the, um, yeah, to the, to the application channel. And uh, to do this, we need um, a special tool for this. And this tool is this config TX scan file. So this file is, is uh, you can find this file in the bin directory from your favorite samples. And uh, here we have some common uh, options, which we have to use. So uh, to create uh, the system channel or the application channel, uh, we have to use here this option profile. And this profile we will see later comes from the config TX YAML file where we can create the channel configuration. And then we can, find, we can, define, the, the, can define the output 
of this. Uh, and uh, in the test network, this is in, in the directory, it's called the channel artifacts. And then here, the my channel txt file. So, and uh, um, this file is named mostly uh, in the same way uh, like, the, like the channel is named. And uh, yeah, but it's, it doesn't matter how this uh, file is named. And then we can uh, say, okay, we need the system channel. So I think that's a fixed name for the system channel. And then you can say, and uh, uh, when you create an application channel, yeah, you can make, uh, you can name, uh, the name is free. But I think there are some um, reglementations for the naming. So I think that you must uh, always use lowercase and um, you can only use uh, an, uh, alpha, alphanumeric and uh, numeric uh, characters for their uh, channel name. And then you need a config path. So um, mostly the config path, the path, the config path uh, shows to the config txt YAML file and is mostly through done with an environment variable and this is called fabric config path. Um, and, uh, but you can use also this option config path and then you don't have to uh, set this environment variable. So I have mixed this so in the example, so we will see that it works also when we use the uh, option here and uh, set the uh, relative path to this config YAML file, or we can use this fabric config path environment variable. So you will find both uh, ways. And the config TX, TX GEN file is responsible for this, uh, uh, cre for the creation of this uh, system channel uh, Genesis block and also for the application uh, channels, for the, for the application channels. Oops. And uh, yeah, and then we need some commands. Uh, so we have the beer command, this beer command, uh, beer channel command, and then we need some commands. So we can need the beer channel create, we need beer channel join, yeah. With the list command, we can see, uh, we, we can get some information about this. And uh, with the update command, this is a command which is used for changing the configuration, the channel configuration. And uh, beer channel get info shows us, shows us a little bit about uh, the peer itself, gives us some information. And uh, that's inter interesting, config TX later. And that's a command which um, um, converts the, uh, the command translate, translate between the protopath and JSON. So what does this mean? So the data structure in the fabric network is done with the proto Puffer protocol with Google's proto Puffer protocol. And that we can read it, we have to translate it. And uh, we can translate it to in the JSON format. And, uh, th and, this, and that is the task for this config TX later. So that's the only thing what, what this tool do is that uh, it translated some information from the prototype proto protocol puffer uh, to the JSON format. And uh, that's an, an, an helpful tool to do this. And uh, the JQ tool is a uh, JSON parser, which we have used uh, in the last sessions as well. Okay, so now that's the theory. So um, now I would like to show you how we can uh, do this. So let me switch to my uh, help file here. And uh, so, and the first step, what we are going to do is, so I start with the uh, fabric samples and in the fabric samples, we have this test network uh, folder. And in the test network folder, we have a file which is called uh, um, the network, uh, the network script, and uh, we copy this. I copy this file, and 
I called it my network. And uh, in this file, um, so, okay, that's not very good. We do it in another way. So I have prepared this here. So, so this is the file, my network, which I have copied. And here, uh, there's a function network up. And then this network up function is, uh, there are two functions here, the create organizations, create orgs and create consortium. And uh, because we want to do it step by step, um, to the, we want, want to create the system channel and also the application channel. And, uh, but we don't want to create the identities and the crypto material for the identities by ourselves. So, and that's the reason why I have uh, commented or I've this out here. So the create consortium uh, function, and then also the uh, Docker compose up command here. So that's the change I have done here. And then in the, in the end, we will uh, call this script. The crypto material will be created, but uh, no system channel is created and also not the application channels are created and also not the uh, chain code will be installed. So, and that's, then we can do this and practice per hand for this mod. So, and then with this small modification, then we have to, uh, uh, my network. Yeah, so we can make it a, a um, executable and then and then we can start this uh, in the same way uh, as we have we would do it when we are going to use the normal script. So and then um, the crypto material for the organizations on the peer should be created. And we can see here uh, when we use the tree command and limit this to two uh, levels, then we see here the uh, crypto material for the other for the other organization, example.com, and also for the peer organization for both peer organizations here. So, and um, the next step is uh, we have to create this system channel, and the system channel. Uh, before we create the system channel, we have a, sm a small look into this uh, config TXYAML file. And here is this TXYAML file. And uh, when you scroll through this file, so we can close this here. So, and, and, and these are the main areas. So we have a section organization here and uh, the, the section cap capabilities here. So, and uh, here have some application defaults and order defaults and uh, channel defaults. And here are these profiles. And for us important now are these profiles. And in these profiles, uh, the configuration file has this uh, configuration here file here and as you can see the important part here this is an, an profile name so you can say this is in two orgs or organesis uh, block or name and uh, when we call the command then we have to say which profile we are going to use and then we can use this name and here you see here define you the uh, consortium name and also the organization which belongs to this consortium. And uh, we have now organization one and two. And that's the reason why when we have three organizations or when we change it in a letter in, in, in later, uh, then we have to modify this. And uh, that's for us the important part here. So we have this sample organization here and the channels here, as you can see, belongs to this sample organization. And then we say, okay, there are channel defaults uh, with policies and application defaults, uh, whatever does mean. But the important part is to this two orgs channel, these two organizations belongs to. So, and uh, organization one, the organization two belongs to this channel. 
and this channel belongs to this consortium. And that's the way you should see this. And here you see the one orgs channel. So that's the, the second example. So, and this second example, this channel belongs also to the sample organization, but only the organization one belongs to this channel. And that means that organization two cannot um, create a channel for this organization. Uh, organization two cannot install or use the chain code which belongs to this organization, to this channel. And uh, that's important to see here. No? And uh, for the moment, it's not so important what about the channel defaults and order defaults. So in this example, we are focusing on the member, on the members of this organization, and these members of, of the organization belongs to a particular channel. And this is how this fit together. So we have here this Genesis configuration, and the Genesis configuration have a so-called sample organization sample consortium and these two organizations belongs to. So we cannot say here, uh, this is, for example, something like this. Yeah? You cannot say organization one and organization three belongs to this consortium below because there is no organization three here. Okay. So, and I think that's the important part here. So you can look into this. So these are uh, elements about the channel policy, but this is not a topic for today. And uh, this maybe that's important. So uh, this profile belongs to uh, points that links to elements uh, to, or to sections in this file. So the order or defaults uh, will be definite here. So uh, when you see here uh, some elements from the organ organization, so the patch timeout, so some examples are the, the um, so as we know in this, in this example, we will have a single raft system and, uh, but this is only for testing. So the raft is a crash fault tolerant ordering system and to be crash fault tolerant, you, you, you need at least three uh, orderers or consenters here is the correct name and then we have to uh, we have to uh, configure this here in this block also the patch time or the patch size these are some some uh, configuration uh, values which often are used to demonstrate how you can change uh, the configuration to a later time and uh, yeah and this you can find here are they in the application here? So, but these are from the policies, some parts, and yeah. And here are the organizations. So, yeah. So, as you can see here, yeah, we have an Ottawa organization. We are, so, always we are speak from an Ottawa organization, we speak from a peer organization, then we mean this organization type here, the organization. Uh, one or the organization two. And then you see here their default policies. Yeah. And for us important for, for playing with that, in the first step, policies are not so important here. So more important for the understanding is here when we have the name and the, and the ID and then path to the membership service provider. So when we come to a state when we are try to uh, go in the way that we say we don't want this here, when we don't want to organization one example.com, when you want to have here your own names, then you have to uh, change this and you can do it with, uh, um, with an editor which replaces these things, uh, but you should know uh, what is important to change here. Yeah, and also for the organization too. So, and that's what I mean when I say that the config.txt YAML file uh, defines also all organizations. And here is no definition for organization free. So, and uh, yeah, when we want the organization free, then we have to uh, fill this in here and then we have to create uh, an update transaction and then we can uh, make an update transaction. And with this update, update transaction, we can um, extend the network for the system channel. So, and all the informations uh, are in this 
uh, config TX YAML file here. But for now, for us, it's only important how we can create channels and uh, these are the way. So, and to uh, point this uh, here, um, yeah, to repeat this here. So the important part is that we have a simple, a sample consortium and only this organization belongs to. And only these two organizations can be included in the channel configuration here. And that's the part where we say, okay, organization one and two belongs to the two orgs channel. However, this channel is named here and uh, the one orgs channel, only organization one belongs to this. And these are, this is the configuration for this. So, and when we have this in place, then we can use the config TX, uh, config TX scan file to, for the, um, for the creation of the, and we see here the config path. So the config path. So from this position, yeah, we have here the uh, config TXT file that's here. And then, oops. So, and we have, have here this file. And then we use the profile. And what we are going to use is this profile, the two orgs autoragenesis profile, which we have seen. Um, um, and we have to define the channel. This is the channel ID. And uh, the first channel is the system channel. And then we can say, uh, okay, we want the output block in this system genesis block, genesis block file. So here now. And this file is then linked uh, in, the, in the Docker Compose file for the start of the uh, network. So, and when we do this, we can copy this. And when we look into the system, we will see the file here. So, which is now created. And uh, yeah, and then we can start the network. And um, let me sh switch to the uh, here. And when, when you look into the Docker Compose file, here is the Docker Compose test.net file, which we're going to use. Then you find here the autoagenesis block. And uh, this autoagenesis block is mounted here through the volumes. And here is our file. So you can do it in another directory. But if you do this, then you have to uh, modify these paths here. Yeah. So, and this is the link to this. No? Okay. So now, when we start the, and with this, we can start the network. And now you see the same happened uh, as on the last sessions, and we see, okay. We have uh, the Ottawa running and we have a PS0 from organization one running and PS0 from organization two running. And then we can use uh, um, the logging. So to see what happened. And then, Okay, let me see. And then we can start with the creation of the application channel. And uh, that's basically the same. So we have to use the config TX game file and we have to use the, the, the right profile. And in the first way, we are going to use the two orx channel file or two orx channel profile. And then we create the, the, the uh, we create, this file creates the channel transaction. And this channel transaction uh, is stored here in another directory, in the channel artifacts here. And that's the default uh, directory, which also the original script is used. And then we can say, okay, we, we need a channel, a channel ID, that's the channel name. And uh, we can also define here the config pa path to the config TX YAML file here. So you see uh, the same, uh, that's the same process as we have seen for the system channel. And uh, I have here only two environment variables. So to reduce here the, 
and the typing and then also the channel name. So it's called the My Channel and then the Ottawa, uh, Ottawa CA environment variable, which is used later here in the creation. So. So, for the test network, we use the correct environment variables. And then we can create the first channel transaction. And you see, uh, this works. And uh, in the channel transaction, channel artifacts directory, you see this my channel txt file. And that's the first step. And then we need some, we need these anchor peers. So as you know, the term peer is divided into uh, basically into two elements. So we have the endorsement peers and we have the committing peer. And then we have a special type, this is the anchor peer. And uh, the anchor peer is used when you have two organizations and to communicate uh, uh, between these organizations, then there is a specific peer used and that is called the anchor peer. And to define this anchor peer, we have do, to do uh, this um, uh, another um, channel configuration for this anchor peers. And you see there is a an, 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 uh, specific uh, option here. It's called the output anchor peers update. And then that's needed the path and the channel name and uh, this as org, as org uh, parameter organization one MSP and the config path as well. And this we need for the organization one and also for the organization two. So this is needed for the private data order for the service discovery. Um, and the service discovery is now responsible uh, for, for uh, that the organizations find each other between uh, the different organizations. So this is the first update transaction for the anchor peer and this is the second as well. And we look into this channel. You can see here the my channel txt channel transaction and the anchor peer transactions here. And the next step is that we can um, create the channel. And to create the channel, we need these uh, helper scripts. And then with this helper script, we can switch between the organizations to set the proper environment variables. So when we say set globals one, then we are using organization one. And when you use the print environment file with the grab core command and search for grab, then you see uh, your environment variables that you use the local membership member should provide ID org one MSP. And that's that's the ID uh, which we have seen in the config uh, TX YAML file, org one MSP. So, and that's, that's the link between, and uh, that's important to know when you change this environment variable, then you have to change also this in the config uh, TX YAML file, yeah, peer organization and so on. So, uh, this, and when you switch to organization two, so here I have set this path as well. And then we can use the peer channel uh, create command. And uh, on this command, nothing is special. The only thing what we have to need is we need the ordering system here. So for the channel create command, we need the ordering system that is also running on localhost uh, 7050 and uh, yeah so the channel name which we are going to use then we are using tls so we have to use this order tls or write command but these tls commands um, are always the same which we are also used for the uh, invoke command then um, here you can see uh, the file 
the channel the, the channel transaction file and then here the output uh, option and here we have then the genesis block for the uh, for this channel and it will be uh, the channel name dot block here so, and here are also the informations for the tls so and with this we can create and you see uh, here um, on the output here you have seen here some things and uh, you will see with the raft leader yeah, and so on and uh, we have received a block zero and then we should have in the channel artifacts um, we see here my channel block and that's the genesis block from this channel and with this we can join the next step is so um, in the last in the last exam so in all exam we have always used the the network script to do to do this in an automatic way so but the steps to create it step by step is always the same so we have to create the channel um, here then we have to join the channel so the peer has to join the channel so now we are we are uh, in tier zero organization one and and we have to join this and that the command is peer channel join for this and we can join with the genesis block here and why we are peer zero in this organization this is uh, because we have set here this environment variable huh? So, okay, so now we have joined this peer and uh, we, can, uh, we can use the peer channel list command to see which channels this peer has joined. And you see here, uh, channel peer has joined my channel. So this works for now. And the same you have to do for your organization too. Uh, with the set globals one, switches to organization one and two switches to organization two. Now we have using organization two. And when we look in the, at the environment variables, you will see the difference. And you see here, the local membership service provider ID is now organization two. You have also an, a different part. Yeah? And you have also here other paths to these uh, uh, membership service provider config path and to the TLS root uh, certificate. Yeah. And uh, these ports, these ports are comes also, all ports come from the configuration in the Docker Compose file here. But now we are, as an, we work as an, as an organization to uh, member. And then since we are on the same machine, we can join the organization peer channel organization two peer channel as well to this uh, yeah to this to this uh, channel okay so the next step is to update the uh, anchor peers and we switch back to this and here we have this update command and with this update command we can say uh, we can use this organization one uh, MSP anchor peers transaction uh, to uh, to define the anchor peer for the organization one. And the same we have to do for organization two. We switch to the organization two. And then we do basically the same command only the path here is changed to the organization to MSB and capitals. So, okay, it works as well. So, and now we are ready to install the chain code for the my channel. So you see, there are some steps to do, but uh, these are the steps uh, which you also will find in the network, uh, uh, in the network script. And uh, that's all the scripts you have to do best when you are doing this step by step. So, and when we are going to install this chain code, then we have to, uh, we are going to use the basic transfer, the asset basic transfer chain code. So then first of all, we have to check if all dependencies are installed. 
and uh, we can switch to this. And uh, yeah, as I've tried it, this before and so, but we can do it. And then we will have here in this vendor directory, all dependencies which are needed for the chain code. And then we do this, what we have seen in the last sessions. So the first step is to package the chain code. And then we can, we have to install this chain code on the peers, on the organization peers here and here. And then we have to improve it. So we have to approve the chain code. We have to approve the chain code of organization one and for organization two. And then we can commit this chain code. And with the committing, the chain code uh, is ready. And uh, the reason why we have to do it for both organization is because we, we, we the default configuration for the endorsement lifecycle for the chain code is uh, that the majority of the organization must approve a chain code. And uh, in a system with two organizations, the, the majority is two. So when we only do it with organization one, then that will not be, uh, that would not be enough. Okay, so um, then let us do this the steps so the first step is we are going to package this chain code again and that produces this uh, basic tar uh, file and then we can install these files and we do it with the same commands so it takes some seconds. So, and that's uh, the diff one of the difference between the um, version 1.4 or version one, that in this way, that takes some time because in the background, uh, the corresponding Docker container, Docker image will be created. And uh, in the version one point, the Docker container uh, is, on, is created on the first invoke. So that's the reason why this takes here some times. And um, the advantage is that we don't have to wait uh, on this creation process when we use it uh, for the first time. So and we do it also for the uh, second one. And um, you see here, we have also some uh, check commands with peer lifecycle chain code query installed, and we can check what is installed on this, uh, on this peer. So, okay. This works also. So. So then we switch back to the organization one. And now we check what is installed. And now you see uh, on this peer, uh, the package ID basic one with this hash value is installed. And we need this. Uh, it's the same, it's the same like here. So, okay, it's the same. And we need this uh, because when we try to approve this chain code, then we have to uh, name here the package ID and um, we store this in an environment variable. And then we can approve this for organization one. So this is basically the same we have seen in the last uh, sessions. So that's the reason why I explain it not so much here. So, so the proof process is the same. Yeah. 
So now both organization has approved this uh, basic chain code. And then uh, we can commit this. And uh, yeah, this is important. This this is important to mention here. So when we do a commit here, so uh, we have to do it also for both peers, for all peers. So as you can see here, we have the peer address, uh, the first peer, and we have here the second peer. So and that's important. And also the TLS root certificates path here. Yeah. So then. If everything works, then we should see something like this. And uh, we can check this with the chain code uh, committed option. And we see here that uh, we see here this uh, uh, basic chain code on channel my channel is successfully uh, committed. And we see also the improve approval. So we see organization one uh, has approved and organization two has approved. So there could be a an, an situation where you have uh, three organizations and we need the majority. Then here we will see organization three MSP uh, maybe to, is set to false. Yeah, and then we can, and then we know, okay, organization three, organization three has not approved this uh, this chain code and uh, but it will work it must work because the the rules in the consortium is set to the majority but we could we could change this that we have to say that uh, we must uh, all approve this all organization members must approve this chain code but that's not the default or not the default configuration and with this command with this chain code pre committed uh, you can check this here so, okay. And then um, let us check if this all works. So now we have to uh, call the init function from the chain code. And uh, you see here, it takes some minutes to create the blocks, but the uh, chain code invokes successfully. And then we can try some queries to see if it works and you see it works so this is the uh the basic uh this this the full chain code and it has a function get all assets and uh so these are the assets which are uh, filled in by the invoke command here by the init ledger command and uh, these are the assets and this pipe jq yeah so we can use this uh jq parser uh, to get this nice uh, print on the console here, yeah. But that's the the same as we have seen in the in the last sessions. So um, yeah, we can query the chain code. This works as well. And then okay, the query uh, uh, works. And then let us try also an invoke command so that we see we can also change something. Um, this is asset one. So, and we see we have changed the owner to Roland from Tomoko. So, okay. That means that our channel one works and uh, we can query and invoke some chain code. And now we try to uh, create the channel B. And for this, so the aim is that only uh, that in channel uh, B, only organization one uh, can read and write. So, and the first step is that we change the configuration or we create the profile for this. So as we have seen it, uh, we have changed, we named it one orgs channel in this, in this config TX YAML file. And uh, we changed, we used here the sample consortium so that, that we know that this channel belongs to the sample consortium and uh, which organization organizations should be the member should be member and we say only organization one should be member so and this we have seen uh, and now we can make the same steps so okay now i use this uh, config uh, fabric config path 
And uh, yeah, so we have channel name organization one channel. And so we use this environment variables here. So, but let me look if I have set global. So, but I have, I think I have to change to set globals um, one. Yeah. So, and now, oops. Okay, my helper environment variables here. And then we create, uh, we use the config TX game file and create this channel transaction and for the profile. So, and here we use uh, one orgs channel. The rest is the same here. So I have copied this. So, so okay, this is also here. And we see in the channel artifacts, we have here a org one channel txt file. And this is the my channel txt file. So, and then, and with this config tx file, we can inspect this configuration as well. And that's interesting to look a little bit into that. So, uh, so we can compare the difference between this organization one channel transaction and the my channel transaction. And when we try this, then we will see something like that. And uh, when you scroll it, then you will see here in this groups, so yeah, channel ID organization one. So, and you see here uh, in the application group, we have here organization one. So, okay. And uh, yeah, so, and when we do the same for the my channel transaction file, and scroll a little bit up, then you see here organization one and organization two, yeah, in this right set. Yeah, and only here in the read set. So the, for the read set, we have organization one and organization two. And in the right set, we have also organization one and organization two. Yeah. And then we look in the organization one, in the other profile file, then we have only organization one. You see here the right set, we have only organization one. And uh, here in the uh, read set, we have also organization one. So, and that's what you can uh, see in the, in, the, in the channel transaction file. You can also use, I have here another example. So uh, you can check this also with the JQ tool. Yeah, and you can dig a little bit in. So when you uh, use this path payload data config update read set, So with this, you can uh, check is your configuration, uh, is your organization in the organization. So, and then you see here, okay, organization one, organization two, in the my channel. And when we do it with the organization one channel, and we see here only organization one in the read set and also in the right set. So let's call a little bit. So we have here organization one. Yeah. And with this config TX GAN file and the option inspect channel create transaction, uh, you can look uh, into this file and you can see, okay, uh, this, this must be okay here. Huh? So you can a little bit inspect this, what's going on here. And you see also here the sample consortium, yeah, and you see other things uh, which we don't have to uh, look into for the moment now. But the important thing is that you see which organization belongs to this uh, channel. So, and that's what you can do with this inspect channel create 
uh, TX option here. Okay, so now that we have this, so okay, I will make sure that I have the right organization, organization one. And then we, we can create the second channel. And that's basically the same, but we use only here another uh, transaction file. And we uh, get another uh, Genesis block here, also in the channel artifacts folder. So and when we do this, okay, then we should see in the channel artifacts here, the channel org, channel, uh, organization one channel block file. So this is the Genesis block. And you can also look into this file. You can look into this file uh, with the config TX later file. So, and that's this tool where you can, um, look into the into the uh, protopuffer file and see and pass this and convert this to a readable form and that's yeah, that, and that's JSON. And when we look at and then we can use the JQ tool for this. And when we use this, then you can debug uh, the Genesis block and see what is in this Genesis block. And that's an important step. So uh, when you, maybe sometimes you want to extract the block from the blockchain and in the block of the blockchain, you will have at least one or more um, transaction. And when you try to uh, um, extract this, then you can do this. So you can get, you can fetch a block, a dip, uh, uh, you can fetch a block from your blockchain and from your channel, and then you can look into this and then you can extract a transaction and in this tra transaction, you will find all the information. And uh, one important point is, but we will not see it today, but uh, that's an important part. So uh, you will see here uh, a lot of a lot of things, um, but um, most most uh, things are encoded uh, base uh, 64. And uh, all values are not encrypted in the blockchain. So that's important to know when you store a transaction and when you fetch a block and to look into this and uh, translate it back to JSON, you can read your data. You can read your data because all data, the data in the, in the transaction and in the block is by, the, by default not encrypted. So it's only encoded in PACE64. Uh, and then when you fetch this block, you can read it and you can see uh, all input parameters uh, and informations about the values and also uh, about the chain code. So, and with this tool, you can translate uh, the information from the protocol puffer uh, format to the JSON format, and then you can read all this stuff. So, but you have to know what you're looking for. So you see here, um, yeah. And you see also uh, which certificates are used and so on. So you can find a lot of information when you know how you can extract the data from uh, or convert this data from the uh, protobuffer protocol to a readable uh, format here. And you see here the uh, header and the data hash format, signatures and so on. So a lot of information are packed in. Okay, so, and then we can, uh, we have to join the beer. And then we can check the channels. We can look which channels are listed on this peer. And now you see you have here uh, organization one channel and also uh, the my channel. So now you have two channels here. And um, so what about the organization two here? So um, that's an interesting part here. So uh, in my observations, I found out you can create the channel. Ah, you cannot create, sorry, you cannot create the channel. The, if you try this, then you will receive this error message. But you can, when you have the Genesis block here, yeah, you can join this channel, yeah? That, that will work, you join this channel and when you uh, make a um, channel list command, then you will see this channel is also joined 
to uh, the, the second peer. And um, yeah, I don't know why this, why this goes, uh, but when you try to approve it, then you will receive uh, the, the error. So access denied uh, when you try this out. So, and that's, I have maybe, um, yeah, I don't know why, but uh, you can join this channel, yeah, but you cannot approve this channel because we are not part of this uh, channel. And uh, in this way, we cannot approve this chain code. Uh, but we can also install this chain code. So we can join this channel and we can also install this chain code, but we cannot approve it. And uh, yeah. And that's my observation on organization too. So I don't know why this, why you can join a channel, why, can, why you can join to a channel where, where you're not um, a member. So, but that, that works. And also then you can install some chain code. Okay, and, uh, but the approve process uh, fails here with this error. And uh, so, and the process ends here. So it seems that you can join a channel and install some chain code, but you cannot approve a chain code, uh, which, is an, which is not allowed for you. So that's my um, facet here on this, uh, on this situation. And then um, we must install the, oops. So we must install the chain code, the AD store chain code. And for this, we install first the um, dependencies. This is the same. And then, and then we can do the same as we have uh, did for the uh, first chain code. So we have to pack the chain code. We have to install the chain code. Then we have also to improve it. And then uh, we have to commit it. Yeah. And there's another command which, which, which we have seen in the last sessions. We have this check commit readiness uh, command where we can control which organizations have improved uh, this chain code for a, to a certain time. So, okay, this is here. So, okay, then here the package command, it's the same, the path to this go package, to this go package, then we have to say, okay, that's a go length, yeah, but we can also use Node.js and Java and we have to set the label. So, okay. And then we have here this basic target set file. So, okay, make sure that we organization one, and then we install this AB store file. And uh, then here you can use the same steps. So you can, Yes, 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 the recording, uh, everything is recorded here and uh, later um, you will uh, see this on the um, Hyperledger channel on YouTube. And yeah, so I will write it also on the meetup chat and, uh, but normally, so the end of the day or tomorrow, the video, the recording will be on the YouTube channel. Okay, so this is this. So, and then we can check this query installed. Then you see here, you have two packages on this peer. So, and that, so we we have a channel, yeah, the, the my, my channel, and on this channel, we have uh, two packages here. So we have two packages on this peer. So that, that's great. That's great. We have a peer and we have two packages on this peer here. So we need the package ID. So that's the AV store. So let us check if that's the same. 
Yes, it's the same. So, and then we have to improve it. That's everything is the same like we did it before. So the transaction is valid. So, and that's the command we have not seen uh, in the first example. And here you see we have we, for the approvals. So we only have to approve organization one. And that's true um, in this JSON structure. And that means we have the majority uh, of this members of this channel. And because here channel org one. So we check the commit readiness on uh, organization one channel here and on this chain code in this version and in this sequence. Yeah. And then we can, we have to commit it. Okay. That's that. And then to test it, we can call in uh, the peer chain code invoke command and we can call this init function. So this belongs, these functions uh, belongs to the chain code and uh, so yeah it works chain coding works successful and that means that we can now uh, can query the account one and we see okay that's uh, uh, we have here 2000 and the organization uh, the account two has here zero and then we try to send from organization one to organization two, uh, from account one to account two, 100. And do the transaction. And you see here, it takes some time on this machine. So uh, the, the chain code invokes successfully is faster than the raft order here on and you see. And then when we check here the And you see here the amount is 100. And uh, the amount for account one must be uh, 1,900. So, and uh, the second chain code is also works. And in the last, uh, I, will, I will show you this channel get info command. So, and that's, uh, that's useful for you that you can see, uh, you can check, um, yeah, the current block hash and the previous block hash. So, but that's not so useful for now, but you see the block height. And with the block height, you see how many blocks you have in this in this chain. And uh, we have uh, in the my channel, we have eight blocks and in the org one channel, we have five blocks. So, okay, that's now we do on the, uh, we do the same again. So, and then we must have on the odd one channel, we have six. Yeah. And that means we have six blocks. And uh, we have seen uh, in the channel configuration a block time from two seconds. And that means that a new block is always uh, created uh, in in an interval of two seconds. And that means uh, for us now that every transaction is uh, in a block and we, we will not have uh, more than one transactions in a block. And uh, yeah, and that's one what you can uh, control. So you can say, okay, I need more than two seconds for, for, for a block. So then you will have basically uh, more than um, one transaction in your, in your block. But this depends on your business need. And that's uh, this configuration here. So, so when you say here, the Ottawa organization, no, um, here, Ottawa. And you hear the patch timeout. So you have two seconds. Yeah. And uh, in every two seconds, a new block is uh, created, yeah. Uh, but you can control this a little bit. So you can, you have here a batch size. So you can say, okay, uh, the maximum message of 10 
transaction. So max message count 10. So, but then we will need a, a, fa a faster system. So in two seconds, we will not have uh, 10 transactions here. So, yeah, so, and uh, one, uh, and uh, the first uh, rule, the first rule which matches uh, is used here. So when we need here, so we can here, so in 20 seconds, uh, and then we will have uh, uh, obviously more than one transactions in, uh, in one plot. But I don't know if this makes sense. So yeah. also the maximal uh, byte size here. And uh, yeah, so here are some, some, this is a little bit where you can uh, configure uh, the creation of a block. And that depends then here on the height. So when you have, and in our case, you can say one invoke transaction uh, will be uh, a new block. So, um, okay, I think uh, we are good in time. So uh, in my file here, so I have, so there are a lot of steps. So, but when you would like to try only the second step, then you can have here this, uh, this way, this is a so-called fast track. So we can use the uh, test network, the, the normal uh, dot uh, network uh, script with the create channel uh, command here, and then the my channel is created. And then you can deploy uh, the basic asset transfer chain code with this deploy uh, command here. So, and that's also the standard way where you can use the network. So don't forget this, and then you can do it step by step to create another uh, channel with limited uh, organization members. And here you can find also some uh, steps to install the AB. Oh, that's the same, I think. Yeah, that's the same we have seen. So, okay. Um, yeah, so that's a lot. Uh, I think we are now in the end. And um, yes, as I have mentioned, everything here is recorded. You will find it later on YouTube on the Hyperledger channel. And uh, um, when the file is ready, I will post it also on the meetup uh, page. And yeah, so do you have any questions to this? Uh, maybe next time uh, we will have uh, a guest speaker and uh, yeah, so we will see, um, but I will uh, write this in the agenda so you can look always in the agenda and uh, this, gets, uh, this guest speaker will uh, present uh, um, and maybe I don't know if he do it, but uh, if he will do it, then he will present his uh, new course. He's going to develop a course and university course and um, at the University of, um, um, I think it's a university in Portugal. And uh, yeah, so uh, if this works, then you will see another um, way of course. Um, so, um, and uh, he will present his course and uh, we can see a different uh, point of view uh, how people from the university uh, see the, this, this topic fabric. And, uh, and uh, that's pretty interesting. So maybe a little bit complicated, but uh, it's uh, interesting. And uh, it's, uh, I think, very, very uh, informative and interesting. So, but for this, um, so how we have a question here. Thanks, Ron. I can Yes. Uh, in one of your sessions, you will have created the network from scratch instead of using test. Um, yes, we can. We we can do this. So um, in the um, we we did this. I think we did this in the in the um, uh, in the sessions before in these uh, fabric administrator sessions, and um, in the next step, uh, we will see if we can do this for the. Uh, with the university course. And then we will uh, look a little bit into the membership service providers and in the field of CouchDB. So, so for now we only use the LevelDB, so, but we can also use CouchDB. 
and uh, when we have some fun foundations then we can go and do this uh, more step by step and today this is the first way to come a little bit uh, away from the uh, network script and um, yeah so i think we can do this yes and i think uh, in the next sessions we will do this uh, as well so you can see uh, it is a lot of work to do this and we have to uh, modify some files but then you can see how the whole process um, is uh, organized and uh, i try this in the way to uh, not to do it all in the same session so for today we have um, we have the creation process uh, extracted and uh, only the the creation of the crypto uh, credentials of the identity files is uh, is from the from the script but um, yeah so we can do it step by step and another important part is the knowledge of the fabric ca so that's also an important part which we can uh, play and use a little bit and the network as script is uh, also a good choice to do that because in this version of the network uh, script we can create we can use the option uh, ca and then the crypto material uh, is used from the um, there are three fabric CAs, one for the order, one for organization one and organization two, and the crypto material is used uh, for this from this uh, organizations. And uh, that's also important when it comes to use the, uh, the Node.js SDK. So for now, we only use the CLI command, but that's only for testing. So when we make it a little bit more in a professional way, then we, we cannot use this uh, CLI command. So we have to use the, the Node.js SDK, for example. And for this, we need uh, an identity management, a wallet. And uh, this uh, users, uh, we can only get through a Fabric CA. And so, and uh, yeah, Fabric CA is also an important part. Okay, so um, do you have another question? So is there a limit on to how many application channels can be created? I don't, I don't think so. So, so uh, I have seen, um, what I have seen is there is no limit. Um, how many application channels you can create. Yes, the recording of the previous sessions are also on this YouTube channel. Yeah. Okay, so any other questions? And uh, let me say, if you have a topic uh, or you want to, um, present an example. So that would be really cool if someone of you tries to try an example and uh, then you can present here this example. So that, and uh, if you are, um, if you need help, I can help you. And uh, yeah, so that, because this session is uh, basically from the community for the community. And um, everyone is invited to contribute to this, to this uh, series. And uh, it would be really a great uh, thing if one of you uh, can show an example. And uh, yeah, and then uh, he can present this. And if you are, um, yeah, and, and I can help you if you want. And then uh, you can present your example. And okay. Yeah, so if no questions, then uh, I have to say thank you for your attention and stay safe and stay at home. So in this time, it's a little bit uh, difficult. And uh, yeah, so um, maybe please try my examples. So, and you can give me a feedback if anybody uh, will not work. So, but I think everything must work and uh, we will stay also on the 2.2 version uh, in the next sessions uh, because uh, 
uh, I have seen the certification, as I have mentioned, uh, is now also on the on the on the official homepage. So um, the, the developer certification is, um, as I have mentioned, uh, some time I think the developer certification is cancelled. So it will come uh, when the version for the 2.2 uh, version is ready. So uh, that will, I think, in the big beginning of the next uh, year. And also for the ad administrator certification, but uh, the administrator certification you can do for the version 1.46, I think so. Um, and uh, there will come also an upgrade to this to 2.2. And because 2.2 is also a long time support version. And uh, that's just really interesting when you go into this process uh, to uh, make this certification. Yeah, so, and that's the reason why we stay on this 2.2 uh, version uh, because of the upcoming uh, certification process. Yes, um, thank you for your attention and uh, see you next time. Thank you.